Thank you guys for joining me today. I'm super, super excited about this video. Uh, this video has been in the planning for a long time. In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing a bunch of saddles. That's right, all of these saddles are gonna be tested and reviewed. For the 2019 deer season, I used a modified sit drag and some of the stitching was coming out. I decided to actually purchase a saddle. So currently I have five saddles. I have the Tethered Mantis, the Tethered Phantom, the Arrow Kite, the H2, as well as the Trophy Line. Those five saddles I'm gonna to put to the test. Now I will say I've not been endorsed, I've not been sponsored, I've not been asked to test any of these saddles by any of the manufacturers. I personally bought each one of the saddles that are gonna be tested in this review. So uh, my opinion on all of these saddles is going to be a fair opinion. Uh, it's really important that um, you have all the information you need before going out and purchasing, uh, spending 200 to $400 with all the accessories on uh, saddle setup. Uh, I did a ton of research and landed on the modified sit drag for the 2019 deer season because I didn't want to commit to that amount of money and get it wrong. There are other saddles out there. Uh, I couldn't buy every saddle. I picked the saddles that were more of the entry level and if you want to pay more for the different uh, uh, accessories or the different comfort features that might come with a saddle, um, you can feel free to do that. But I did want to kind of compare apples to apples and I bought similar saddles. Now, when I was at the Outdoor Rama, uh, I had the opportunity to check out the Tethered Phantom. So I went ahead and purchased that saddle and wanted to add that to the mix. Uh, since then, the H2 saddle has come out with uh, a new bridge system, which is the uh, Amsteel Blue Bridge. I did talk to Heath and the owner of H2 Saddles. And I am adding the new Amsteel bridge to that H2 saddle. Okay, so how is the Ultimate Tree Saddle review going to work? Good question. I brought all of my hunting gear with me. I even brought my bow with my target arrows. The plan is to put a saddle on, take a short walk across the field into the woods, find a tree, get set up, throw my sticks up, uh, using my lineman's belt, uh, doing everything I would do in a hunting scenario. So each saddle, I'm gonna shoot three arrows, uh, try to utilize the bridge through the carabiner, sit in the saddle for an hour, come down the tree, come back out, grab the next saddle, put it on, do the same thing for each saddle. Okay, one thing I wanted to point out was this review is not about the safety of all of the saddles. There is plenty of information online and with the manufacturers on safety testing. What I am doing with this review is um, focusing on the functionality as well as the comfort of the saddles. Uh, those are the main two things that this saddle review is going to look at. So before we get started, first I wanna take you to the unboxing and first impressions, and then I'll bring you back out here and We'll head to the woods and get started. It's real nice. It comes with a, a pouch already attached for your lineman's rope or your tether. Also comes with a second pouch. The waist belt feels real sturdy and heavy duty. It's got a nice uh, mossy oak pattern to it. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna like the, the two inch webbing for my bridge. I'm gonna certainly give it a fair shake. I'm not ruling anything out because I may find I really like it. I'm not sure if I like that these leg straps are not adjustable. They're just loose. Lineman's loops feel nice and secure, uh, nice and stiff. I can see where clipping in would be real easy.
first impressions. Super lightweight, you don't even really feel like you're wearing anything. They are reinforced, they're thick. They're a little more flimsy. You can't just uh, hit down on them and clip in. Um, the way they're positioned right here, they'd be really easy to find in the dark. Uh, it does rotate through the carabiner really easy. Okay, so what I have here is the added triad bridge as well as the original bridge that came with the saddle. The original bridge is attached just by tying knots on each end of the bridge, which is nice because it's adjustable as well as remove it from the saddle. I tied this on myself. Uh, it took me three or four minutes to learn how to tie these friction knots. Uh, these two ends right here are just continuous loops that you um, use a, a Prusik knot and tie it around the bridge loops and then you actually feed your bridge line through uh, and tie this friction knot on each end. Both of these Prusik knots are adjustable. If you put weight down on this it locks into your bridge loops You can loosen it and adjust it. You can move it up and lock it in. So you can change the pitch of your saddle. This is very similar to the Tethered Phantom, which you'll see later in this review. It's very similar to that concept. The H2, it's adjustable from the very top all the way to the very bottom. So you actually have more degree of adjustability with the H2 than you do with the Tethered Phantom. A very, very neat system. These stopper knots are spliced. They're not tied knots, they are splice knots, so they won't move uh, or come undone. on the Phantom. These are definitely going to be easy to clip into. And they're nice and stiff. The lineman loops support you from the bottom as well as from the top. For the Tethered Mantis, the lineman's loop only came off of the top webbing. Uh, they have gone to the Amsteel adjustable bridge. The Phantom also has the comfort channels so you can change uh, the pitch as far as where the pole is going to be. So you have three comfort channel settings. You have a low, you have a middle, and you have an upper setting. Mantis is cut straight across. And the Phantom does have a curve to it. Uh, a curve to the top as well as the bottom on the Phantom. Just first impressions, there's plenty of molly loops. Um, I do like the look of it. It looks really sharp. Your lineman's loops um, are pretty stiff. It's a little noisy, but I'm assuming once that's on and snug down, you won't hear that. But with this bridge, at least you can uh, untie it and uh, make it longer or shorter. The other thing I'm seeing right off the bat is your leg loops. Uh, it looks like these are two buckles that are put together, which would be somewhat of a pain to take apart. 
it might be easier just to step through that than it would be to take it apart. That might be the same for uh, the waist belt. It might be easier just to step through it rather than having to unbuckle this. One thing that's kind of nice is you have an adjustment here, so that could change the pitch. I like that, that's kind of neat. Lineman loops seem to be far enough forward that they would be easy to, uh, to feel in the dark or to look down and see with your flashlight. They're nice and stiff. It slides through really easy, just a rotation of your hips. First impressions, uh, the only thing I'm not a really big fan of is probably the leg loops and the waist buckle. So the first saddle I'm going to test is the Aero Kite. off of the saddle. You can pull up on these. They have nice finger loops and that tightens the bottom edge of the saddle. If you take your thumb and just push down on this buckle and it relieved the pressure. It's kind of a nice feature. All right, so overall for the Aero Kite, it's not the easiest saddle to put on. The leg loops as well as the waist belt don't come apart very easily. It would be easier if those just had quick release buckles. As far as comfort in the saddle, I was totally comfortable. As far as the bridge sliding through my carabiner, uh, it slid pretty easy. The next saddle is going to be the Tethered Mantis. This is definitely lightweight. As far as comfort, I do think the Aero Kite is more comfortable. Um, even in one hour, I can tell a difference. It just has a, a constant feeling of um, an upward pull. Maybe the best way to describe it is like your butt cheeks being pulled up. I know that sounds funny, but um, that's the only way I can think to describe it is you feel most of the weight around the top strap. The lineman loops were super easy to use. All right, the next saddle I'm trying out is the trophy line. Mm -hmm. There's two layers to your bridge. If you relieve the pressure from this buckle, you can pull it through. As you can see right here, there's two straps through the carabiner and there's no strap across the middle except for my waist belt. This two inch strap does not go through my carabiner at all. I mean, I would need to get a new carabiner. The top webbing is pulling into my waist and into my sides, uh, just below my ribs. I wanted to point that out. I, I do feel that. I felt that a little with the Tethered Mantis, not as much as I am with the Trophy Line. I do feel it more with the Trophy Line. 
Tethered Phantom. That's the next saddle I'm testing out. So far I've moved the uh, comfort fit channel into the middle now. It was in the top. I'll move it down into the bottom as well. The uh, Phantom so far is uh, it's really comfortable. It's definitely lightweight, similar to the Mantis. Um, a very uh, minimalist type feel. It was super comfortable too on my knees. I had the comfort setting on the bottom channel just a few minutes ago and there's really not a big difference between the middle and the bottom. Um, it does change the pitch a little bit but it's very subtle. The Phantom is definitely very comfortable. It's very lightweight, minimalist. Um, it's got the adjustable bridge. It's AM steel. It rolls really good through the carabiner. It's got big lineman's loops that are stiff. They definitely made a, a big change, a significant change from the Mantis to the Phantom as far as that top strap kind of pulling into your waist. They've corrected that issue. The Phantom's really comfortable, so I have no complaints. All right, we're closing in on the final few minutes. There's, there's really nothing I could find with this saddle that I wouldn't like, so. All right, the weather's a little warmer today. I ran out of uh, camera light the other day. Next up is the H2 saddle. for about a half hour. The way it's cut, it just cups your butt. Uh, it's super comfortable. It has the triad bridge. I've already adjusted the bridge length through the friction knot. Uh, you can change the pitch of the saddle, take your weight off. So I just slid it down about a half inch. You can make adjustments all the way basically from the orange stripes to the orange stripes. You can make adjustments that whole distance. So far the saddle's performing very well. The bridge is working really well. Um, it's a really comfortable saddle at this point. So I left the other bridge on the original bridge that you get, the one inch strap. I left it tied on and just hanging here because I do want to take a couple minutes and just use it in the saddle. Some people might not elect to go with the Amsteel triad bridge and if they do stick with this bridge I wanted to go ahead and try it out so I just made an adjustment to the triad bridge and slid it down I can definitely feel the the difference in the bottom of the strap it's much more comfortable putting it down there if you're in the kneeling position that feels very good so let's try moving it to the higher position It does end up sliding down a little bit. It doesn't hold that position. Probably the only real negative with the H2 is how flimsy the lineman loops are. If I had anything negative to say so far about the H2, that would probably be the only thing. Okay, I'm back at the house now, and I have a spreadsheet that I wanna go over with you that covers all the details of every saddle, as well as my overall rating for each saddle. 
Before we get into that, I'm going to take you back to the field and I'm going to let you know what I'm going to do with each saddle. So we'll be right back here in just a minute. All right, well, we made it to the end of the video. Uh, all of the saddles have been worn and reviewed, and I am now going to sell all of the saddles except for one. I'm going to keep one saddle. If you're interested in purchasing one of these saddles at a discounted price, just post a comment below and I'll respond. If there's anything else you'd like to see me do, any other reviews, uh, if you'd like any other information on any of the saddles that I have, just leave me a comment. Um, okay, so at this point, I'm going to go over all the details of each saddle, and at the very end, I'm going to give you my overall rating for each of those saddles as well. First off is the Trophy Line. It cost $169.99. It came in at 2.1 ounces. It comes with two dump pouches. The buckle style is a slider feeder strap. There are no ordering options, it comes as is. The pros are the price, the pouches, comes with a carry bag and a beanie, uh, sturdy lineman loops, the bridge buckle allows the bridge to snug up as you're walking in and out of the woods. It comes in a mossy oak camo pattern. The cons, it's heavy. The feeder slider buckle, in my opinion, is a con. The two inch bridge, in my opinion, is a con. The buckles are noisy. The waist buckle as well as the bridge buckle um, are metal components and there's some noise. The leg straps are not removable um, and the bridge is not removable. It's sewn in and the saddle gave me some side and rib pressure uh, after wearing it for an hour. The overall comfort rating I gave is a three. The tethered mantis came in at $199.99. It weighed 1.5 ounces. It was the lightest saddle of the group. It came with either a dump pouch or a sis hauler is what tethered calls it or the microfit adjusters. Buckle style is a clip on clip. The ordering options as I just mentioned you can either get the sis hauler or you can get the microfit adjusters. The pros it's lightweight adjustable and removable leg straps has two leg strap positions, an upper and a lower. Has an amp steel bridge. Comes with the microfit adjusters or the sys hauler. The cons uh, has a flimsy lineman loops. And there was a slight upward pressure uh, after sitting in the saddle for an hour. The overall comfort rating is a 3.5. The H2 came in at $170 or $185 depending on the bridge style you choose. It weighed 1.8 ounces. It does not come with any dump pouches. It's a clip on clip buckle. The ordering options, you either get a one inch bridge that's a strap material, or you can get the Triad Amsteel bridge for an additional $25. It also comes with three camo or three color options. You get a tan option, or you get two camo field or tree hunter camo patterns. The pros, definitely the price. It's lightweight. It has adjustable removable leg straps. Has the triad bridge as an option or the one inch strap bridge. Both are removable. Uh, comes in tan or camo and is very comfortable. The cons, it has flimsy lineman loops. The bridge adjustment position does slip slightly as you saw in the video. The comfort rating for the H2 was a 5. Uh, the H2 was uh, a very comfortable saddle. The Phantom cost $249.99. It came in at 1.7 ounces. Uh, it comes with zero dump pouches or sys haulers. The buckle style is a clip on clip. There are no ordering options. It comes as is. The pros, it's lightweight, has adjustable removable leg straps, has the Amsteel Utila Bridge, comfort channels, upper and lower lineman loops, the lineman loops attached to the upper and lower sections of the saddle, and it was a comfortable saddle. Uh, the con for the Phantom was definitely the price. The comfort rating I gave was a 4.9. It was slightly less comfortable than the H2. The Arrow Hunter Kite came in at $189. 
It weighed 2.2 ounces, came with zero dump pouches. The buckle style was a slider feeder strap. There were no ordering options. The pros were the price, came with a carry bag and a beanie, uh, has sturdy lineman loops and removable adjustable bridge, and it was comfortable. The cons, it was heavy, uh, it was the heaviest saddle. In my opinion, the feeder slider buckle and the buckles are noisy. The leg strap buckles as well as the waist buckle have metal components and are noisy. Has a non-removable leg straps. The comfort rating I gave for the Aero Hunter Kite was a 4.9. Okay, so we're ready to look at the overall ratings for each saddle. For the Trophy Line, I gave an overall rating of a 3. For the Mantis, I gave an overall rating of a 4. For the H2, I gave an overall rating of a 4.8. For the Phantom, I gave an overall rating of a 4.8. And for the Arrow Hunter Kite, I gave an overall rating of a 4. So the H2 and the Phantom came in at a tie. The reason that I gave the H2 a 4.8 had to do with the ordering options as well as the pros. Um, the price of the saddle and all of the options that you get with the H2 as well as the overall comfort. That was the most comfortable saddle. The H2 would have received a straight 5 overall rating. However, the lineman loops were a little bit flimsy and the bridge loop slipped just a little bit. It did not hold the exact positions. So I took two tenths off, one, one tenth off for each of those two. So it came in at a 4.8. The reason the Phantom came in at a 4.8 had to do with the price, $250, and that's just for the saddle alone. And it was not the most comfortable saddle. Uh, it was very comfortable, but the H2 was more comfortable. So I took one tenth off for the price, one tenth off for the comfort, and it tied with the H2 at a 4.8. If you're interested in getting a copy of this spreadsheet, just drop me a comment below and I'll get a copy of it to you. If you found this review helpful or interesting, or you simply saw the amount of work that went into putting it together, if you could just give me a thumbs up, I would really appreciate that. Also, if you've never subscribed to my channel, I would also appreciate that as well. All right, the saddle I decided to keep is gonna be the H2. So if you guys are interested in any of the other saddles that are for sale, just drop me a comment below and I'll get in touch with you. I really appreciate it. Thank you guys for watching and I hope it was helpful. Mm -hmm.